Hey, what's going on? My name is Mitch and on this channel, I bring powerful ideas to light that connect you better with yourself, with others and with the world around you. In this video, I'm going to talk about, I'm going to be speaking to the men out there and I'm going to be referencing a, uh, a very insightful book by David Data, which is The Way of the Superior Man. If you're interested in uh, reading about men and masculinity, I think this is a must read. There's a lot of books out there these days that sort of had a bit of a resurgence, the men's movement, but um, I think this is a must read. Um, even if you're not, it's a, the subtext, uh, the subheading, sorry, is a, a spiritual guide to mastering the, mastering the challenges of women, work and sexual desire. Um, now you don't have to be all that spiritual to read it. There's some very practical advice. And, uh, today I'm going to be referencing some tips in here. Now, if you're a young guy out there, I'm sure you've had at least, or if you're a man out there in, in today's day and age, you've had the thought cross your mind that, uh, society is not all that kind to you, uh, there's not a place for us anymore, you might not feel like you've got a purpose, you might be struggling with your identity, with what it means to be a man. Um, and today I'm going to give you three very practical tips that you can take home with you um, from my mouth via David D here. And um, you're going to be able to wake up tomorrow and you're going to be able to immediately implement these and hopefully make your life better. Because uh, I think what we can do with a whole lot more in this world is some uh, more self-actualized strong men. So, all right. So, the first thing, the the first point that I want to talk that I want to reference is uh, is live as if your father were dead. Now, this is quite a morbid point, but the metaphor behind it is you need to be living your life in accordance with your values and your values are going to be very different to your, well, you might've been handed down some values from your father or from your mother or, but our parents are very good at um, instilling what they want into our value system. And often there's a lot of internal uh, push and pull within us. So what David talks about here is you need to live as if your father were dead. So what this means is our parents and in particular for boys, we're often always trying to make our fathers happy, trying to measure up to our father's standards. So what this means is uh, most boys are always striving for their father's approval. If you were to get up tomorrow and be living in accordance with your values, this is, this is absolutely imperative to becoming a, a mature man. It's absolutely, you, you don't want to be approval seeking, which is what, um, which is what living your life for someone else is, even though it's your father or parents or authority figures. The idea behind this one is you need to wake up tomorrow and, and live as if, live as if your father's, live as if your father's dead, live as if what, what matters to you is your needs. You need to put yourself first. <clears throat> and uh, that's my interpretation of this. So I'm going to read directly from uh, some of David's, uh, a short little uh, sentence that David writes in the book. He says, he just put, poses a question to us. And this question is, how would you live your life differently if you had never tried to please your father? And that's just something that I want you to, you can meditate on it. And you can, uh, you can think about that a bit deeply after the video, but, but really think about that is how would you live your life differently if you had never tried to please your father. I'll leave that with you. All right, and for, so for number two, this is a very important one for all men. I've sort of been speaking to uh, younger men with that last one, I suppose, but um, this is a very, very important one for all men. And that is your purpose must, be, must come before your relationships or your relationship. Now, for too many, too many guys out there, we've all done it before where whether you know, you're super young, you're in high school, younger, and you've always tried to, to be the nice guy, please, please your girlfriend, your wife. And I think what's, what's very important 
about this this point, which is live your life for your purpose. We need to break this down. And if you're a man and you haven't found your purpose, I'm going to tell you what it is right now. There's a lot of talk about purpose out there. I'm going to tell you practically what your purpose is. Your purpose is your work. If you work at McDonald's, that's your purpose. Do that 150% every time you go to work and your purpose is your work. A male purpose is work. That's always been a man's purpose is his work and what he's contributing. I won't go down the uh, politically incorrect uh, female side of things. That might be for another video, but if you're a man and you're wondering, what is my purpose? Your purpose is your work. It always will be. You need to, you can definitely explore other avenues, whatever that might be, but in this right here, right now, your purpose is your work. Do it well and do it, do it better than anyone else. Okay, so your purpose, so that's your work. Your purpose comes before your relationship. Your work always comes before your relationship. And that is, um, too many young men are always trying to put their girlfriends, girlfriend's needs ahead of their own. And they think that uh, their, their woman will appreciate this or see this as some kind of endearing trait. She won't. And David talks about it in the idea of where we are all either masculine or feminine energies. Take this as you will. However, in a very practical sense, your woman doesn't want you to put her first. She wants you to have something greater going on. She wants you to be pursuing something more. I don't care what this is. Put it, make it your work. Become a psycho gym rat who goes to the gym every day. You need to be pursuing more, building more, becoming becoming more than you are because that's what it, that's what your that's what your woman was attracted to in the first place more than likely you are a guy with ambition with with vision and you need to be consistently never endingly pursuing something else other than your woman and that's practical tips i don't think i have anything to read out from david here but um Yeah, David David does make one point here and he says, never half commit or half effort your purpose or your work. That's very, very poignant. All right, and number three, um, because women or the feminine, they're always going to be, if you're a heterosexual male or if you're a, uh, a yeah, if, if you have a, as David would describe, a masculine energy, you're always going to be attracted to the feminine. You're always going to be attracted to, to very feminine women. And uh, you're always going to be attracted to this, but you might not, you might not be attractive to, to a feminine woman unless you embody this next, this third point here. And that is the third point of polarity. Okay. And what does this mean? Polarity. This means... As above, so below. That means if you want to attract a beautiful, elegant, feminine, loving, caring woman, girl, you need to be you need to be embodying the exact opposite masculine traits. And what is that? We're talking traditional masculine traits here. You need to be hopefully in shape. You need to be decisive know how to change a fucking tire, know how to fight some general kind of hand-to-hand -hand combat. We're talking traditional masculine traits. Work, be, be good, you know, work hard, be, be number one in your field, whatever that is. You need to be embodying traditional masculine traits because that is what attracts extremely feminine women. If that's what you're into, if, if not, then if you're happy with a you know, you might be more in the middle of things, which I, I don't think most men are, men are if they're honest with themselves. Most men are attracted to very feminine women. And you can't, you, you're not going to be able to attract this kind of woman if you're still stuck in this idea of uh, equality and we're, we're all the same and this and that. We're not. You bring a lot to the table as a masculine man and she brings a lot to the table as a feminine woman. And together you create, you, you attract each other through polarity. And that's what brings you together. If I'm if I'm indecisive and I've got no idea what's going on with myself and da 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 da, then I'm just going to repel repel the type of women that I'm into. So 
for men out there, you need to, young guys in particular, if you think that you're going to attract a girl by being a friend or being, you know, being, being very similar to her, common interests is fine. That's one thing. But in terms of raw attraction, it comes from polarity, okay? Um, and that's important to remember both in, in a relationship as well because the dynamics can change in relationships and it's important to remember like, you know, oh, you know, we used to have, we used to have a spark here. What's going on? What's going on? Okay. Well, have a look. Are you, are you acting a bit more? Are you, are you submitting a bit more? Are you, are you, are you not standing to what you want to, you know, put yourself forward, be, be the man in the relationship. And if she doesn't like that, then that's okay. That's fine. You know, it's plenty of fish in the sea. So I, I hope you got something out of this. Um, and I'll hopefully revisit, revisit some other um, topics to do with men. And if you like this type of content, please uh, subscribe, keep watching. I'll definitely be putting some more stuff out in the future. Um, again, if, if you didn't see it to begin with, that's the way of the superior man. I recommend you get, you get onto it. And yeah, thanks for watching. Bye.